Hi, this is designer Bevan Dunn for Digital Ginger, my design company. And this is a short demonstration and tutorial for using one of my scrapbooking kits with Memory Mixer software. The kit we'll be talking about today is the Photographer's Notebook Quick Mix. And a Quick Mix for Memory Mixer is basically just a pre-arranged set of pages. It comes with the artwork. So in this case, it comes with all the really fun photo frames and journaling areas. And then it has placeholders for your photos. So it's easy to just drag and drop them in and create a book. So this Quick Mix has 10 black and white layouts. And I'm going to show you how easy it is to just add your photographs, how you can change the colors of the backgrounds if you want to, and a few tips and tricks. Now, if you want to follow along or you want to create the photographer's notebook, you'll need two things. The first is a copy of Memory Mixer software, which you can buy at memorymixer.com. And then you'll also need to go to their store and download the photographer's notebook quick mix. And you can find it by going to the store and typing in Bevan into the search box or photographer's notebook. And once you purchase it, it will actually install into the software for you, which is great. Now I was inspired by two things to create this photographer's notebook quick mix. And the first uh, are a set of stenciled journaling areas. They're kind of fringy, they've got a little grit to them, which is what I like to put in my layouts. And I have a separate uh, video tutorial for using these because they're a little bit different than my normal um, embellishment kits. And as I was thinking about creating uh, a quick mix using these journaling areas, I was also inspired by a new camera that I got. It's a Panasonic GF1. And I'd taken my first group of photographs this past weekend. I went to the beach with some friends. And when I started putting these photographs together with the journaling areas, I really got inspired. And I also wanted to showcase the photographs, not adding a lot of embellishments or extra things. And so I created these set of frames. And here's an example of one of the layouts from the Quick Mix. You have a very strong photograph. You've got the journaling area and a little bit of a kind of a grungy you know, edge to it to, to just give that little extra. Now, to get started and get your Quick Mix going, once you've got the uh, photographer's notebook downloaded and purchased, uh, when you're in Memory Mixer, you want to go to the File menu and New Album. It's going to ask you what you want to do. In this case, you're going to create a Quick Mix. You'll be able to see all the Quick Mixes you have installed, and you'll want to scroll down and find the photographer's notebook. And for the way I'm putting it together, I'm going to insert my photos individually, one at a page at a time, one photo at a time. But if you've already got them grouped in a folder, you can actually have it uh, do it for you automatically. And you can change them out afterwards as well. It'll ask you what to name your photo book. And then you just say Create Album. And later I'm going to tell you a little about this coupon. Now here I am in Memory Mixer. Uh, I've got this Photographer's Notebook Quick Mix opened for you. And there are some thumbnails at the bottom. I can uh, pull my screen down a little bit here so you can see those thumbnails. You don't need to see them for uh, the whole preview, but you can see there's 10 pages. I've got the first page uh, selected right now. And we're going to get going. So in this first layout, uh, we've got a nice frame. It has an area for one picture. And you'll notice it says double click to add a photo to this box. Now, if I click on this, uh, I'm actually going to get this open, or uh, sorry, object settings box that comes up instead of anything having to do with photographs. Well, the reason for that is in Memory Mixer, when you have something like a frame that has an area that's transparent, that transparent area actually is still considered a part of the whole frame. And so when I'm clicking in this blank area, it appears as if I'm clicking on the 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 photo placeholder itself, but I'm really clicking on the frame. But that's easy to remedy. There are layers, and the frame layer is above the photo box layer. So all I need to do is send it to the back or send it behind the photo box, and then I can add my photo. So I'm going to go up to this button that says Change Object Layer, and I'm going to say Send to the Back. 
you notice the grungy edges don't show anymore and that's because the photo box is finally <laughs> up uh, where I can click it. And I can add photos a couple of different ways. Here it says double click to add a photo, so I'll do that. Um, basically just look in your computer uh, until you find the, the folder that your photos are located in. And I'm going to pick the photo I want and just click OK. Now, once my photo is added, I'm going to want to see if the, the cropping of the photo is, is exactly what I want. And so right here it's saying, hey, you know, your photo is maybe a little different size than the photo box. Uh, I'm just going to say OK to start so I can see how this is looking. And to really get an idea of uh, whether I like my photo within the photo frame, I'm going to send it back. I'm going to send two back, so behind that frame, to see where is it getting cut off, where is it, or is it really showing. And it's really not that bad, but I think I prefer the boy's face to be a little bit over to the left. So there's a couple things I can do. Um, I want to bring my photo back to the front, and the fact is I can just hit this undo button, which takes me back a step, so now my photo's to the front again. And in this case, I really do want the face over to the left a little bit, but I'm going to have to increase the size of my photo to, to fill the frame, so I'm just grabbing one of the corners and pulling so that it has a little more of the layout that I'm looking for. I can send that to the back. And that's not too bad. Um, again, I think I would still prefer the face to be down a little bit, so I'm going to pull this down so I don't cut off all of his hair. <laughs> and I'll send it to the back. Looks pretty good. Well, I'm almost done with my layout. All I need to do is add my journaling. And just to save myself a little bit of time, I do have it typed out in Microsoft Word so I can just paste it in. But let's go to uh, an area that lets us put in some titles in journaling. So on the left-hand side of Memory Mixer, you have a lot of tabs that have options. And one of them is called Titles and Journaling. And I'd like to add some text. My text box editor will come up. Um, I'm going to just grab some of the words that I'm going to use in here from Microsoft Word. I'm just copying, and I'm going to go back to Memory Mixer and just paste it in. So I have my list of words. Now, I need to pick a font and a size, and I do know ahead of time right now which font I want to use. So I'm going to go down here, and I believe it's called VT Corona, so I'm going to go towards the bottom. There it is, and it's kind of a typewriter font, and I'm going to click OK. Now when it first comes in, it's a pretty big size. Right now it's 48, and I'm going to need to pull the edges of my text box so I can see all of my text. Now the size is definitely going to be too big for this area, but that's pretty easy to fix. I already know that 28 is a pretty good size for what I want. And I'm going to just line up the very first word, headstrong. And you'll notice that these words don't exactly line up with the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 from the journal area. Not a problem. It's actually a really easy way to make it line up with not making uh, five text boxes, but leaving one text box. And the trick over here is line spacing. This is how much height in between each line. So every time you hit the return key on your keyboard, that's considered a line. And I'm going to start increasing this line spacing, and you'll see the words are spreading out a little bit. And 15 seems to work pretty well. Really, the last step is to color the text. I do want to maybe just make it a little less black, a, a little more of the gray color from the layout. Um, now, if I wanted to over here, I can say black text or white text on the left. White doesn't look bad. But there's also a match color, so I'm going to click the little eyedropper. And there's a lot of ways to choose colors. There's some tabs at the top. I like the picker. And what that means is as you hover over your photograph in the preview, you can see the little pixels and the squares that of color that you might want to color your text. And I'm going to pick a dark gray color and click OK. So now it's not black, it's just a little bit dark gray. You might prefer lighter gray or green or blue. I think this one looks pretty good. So this is the end of part one of the Photographer's Notebook Quick Mix demonstration and tutorial. To see a few more layouts, go ahead and watch part two.